Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm actually reviewing three of the Arcadia books by John Courtney Smith which I believe you can now buy as a set but you can still buy them separately. So let's start off with the first one. So the Arcadia Guide to MBD and its Elimination in Captivity. This is a paperback book with just over 100 pages and room for notes at the back. Now it covers a range of topics surrounding metabolic bone disease from its effects on captive reptiles to explaining the D-free cycle as well as effective supplementation. Not only this, but unsurprisingly the book covers everything you need to know about UV or at least the basic understanding of the subject. For me personally I've always harped on about metabolic bone disease and how much it infuriates me to see this easily avoided problem still occurring in captive animals. So for me this book was very helpful not only because it highlighted the real dangers of a lack of proper supplementing but also because it opened my eyes to the benefits of UV. I would definitely recommend this for people who own or will soon own reptiles, amphibians or even exotic birds who want to understand UV lighting a lot better and overall have a good understanding of metabolic bone disease and how to avoid it. So for me I found the next book even better than the last, this is the Arcadia Guide to Reptile and Amphibian Nutrition. So once again, as you may know, I go on and on about supplements and the importance of gut loading and surprisingly I actually do get some backlash for this, I have heard people say to me, maybe you shouldn't talk about it because people don't really understand it and so you're scaring them. People have literally said that to me. So when people say that to me or they say they don't fully understand it or they come up with a classic quote of animals don't get supplements in a while so why should we give them to them in captivity? What I want to do when people say this is literally hand them this book and walk away. This book is fantastic for explaining all you need to know about diet and nutrition when it comes to amphibians and reptiles. Now of course each animal is different so some requirements may vary a little but I definitely think this book produces a very informative, solid foundation for this subject as a whole. I find when reading this you get a great understanding for the importance of certain vitamins and minerals, food groups and gut loading, each of which this book goes into great detail about as well as going through a range of feeder insects in detail from fruit flies to river shrimp, from Indian stick insects to butterworms. The book also talks about obesity, which once again, like gut loading, is often overlooked. Other subjects covered include brumation, hydration, safe to feed plants, good gut flora, the list goes on. I can't recommend this book enough. I think if you're passionate about reptiles and amphibians, this is a fantastic read. In comparison to the last book, it's a little bit longer. It's approximately 270 pages long. Now for the third and final book, The Arcadia Guide to Bioactivity and the Theory of Wild Recreation. So, similar to the last book, it's a hardback book, but this time with over 370 pages. There's been an ever-increasing interest in bioactive tanks, and this book definitely gives you a few pointers on how to achieve the very best for your pet. Now once again, I'm going to go through a few subjects that this book covers just to show you the range of information you receive. Now the book talks about measuring UVB, the light and shade method, solar indexes around the world, plant suggestions, custodians, humidity, B vitamins, odour control, as well as a whole chapter just for leopard geckos. Now although by the time I read this book I'd already made two separate natural tanks for my crested geckos, I can't help but be inspired to do even better for them. And even venture down the slightly more daunting route of making a natural tank for a leopard gecko which I heard isn't actually that difficult. Not only that but I now have a whole load of tank ideas in my head for a range of reptiles and amphibians I don't even own. That's just because this book kind of gives you a few ideas and it doesn't give you like a planner. It won't say to you put a branch here, a fern here and a rock there or anything like that but it does explain the importance of enrichment and the importance of using correct growth lights and the importance of using safe plants in suitable nutrient rich soil. Similar to the last book, I find this gives you a fantastic foundation of knowledge which you can build upon. 
So overall, I would recommend these books. I feel like the first one is definitely great for those of you who really want a good understanding of UV and to understand how you can easily avoid metabolic bone disease. The second book I would recommend for anyone who keeps exotics, it's really an eye opener, especially regarding the way in which we feed our pets. Personally, I'm very happy I don't have a snake. I couldn't be dealing with mice and rats and chicks. I think I'll stick to crickets and worms for now. Now the last book, definitely if you're thinking of building a natural tank but you don't really know where to start, then this is for you. Regardless whether you have reptiles or amphibians or both, I definitely feel like these books will benefit both you and your pets. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. It's been slightly different, but you know. As I said, I'd highly recommend these books if you want to give them a try. But thanks for watching, guys, and goodbye.